And he said unto them, verse 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following, Amen. Matthew twenty-eight nineteen, Go ye therefore. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. My text. My title tonight, are you listening, Billy? Turn loose in there. Quit fiddling them controls and listen, I'm going to give you my title. Amen. Go ye, and lo, I, (laughs) L-O, I. That's from the part that says, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Go ye. And lo, I, praise God, from Jerusalem to Azusa Street and to the ends of the earth, they went everywhere, the Bible said. He said, go ye, praise God, and they went like Samson's foxes. You remember Samson caught 300 foxes and tied their tails together and tied firebrands to their tails and turned them loose in the standing corn of the Philistines? Amen. Amen. They persecuted them from the very word go, but they found out soon that persecution just made the foxes run faster and spread more fire. Praise God. They went everywhere. God working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Praise God. Do we have a destiny in this computer age? Amen. What can we do in our time, in our day of the super church, where everything has already been done or at least tried Is there a destiny for us? Is there any frontiers for us to conquer? Amen. Is there some place where we can carve out our nick in society for the glory of God? Praise God. I declare to you, there is. There always has been. When it looked like there was no new frontiers, praise God, Dave Wilkerson found his destiny on the streets of New York City among the junkies and gangs of the streets of New York City. Amen. And carved his place in history. Praise God. Ask Holy Hubert. Amen. That Kentucky redhead, amen, that found him a place to preach in Berkeley University, praise God, in California, amen. He knocked both his front teeth out and nicknamed him Holy Hubert. He just went on preaching. And when the riots got so bad in Berkeley and other colleges, praise God, the 
the government, the federal government, praise God, would pick Holy Hubert up. Amen. His nickname in Kentucky was Red Lindsay. Amen. They nicknamed him Hubert, uh, Holy Hubert, because his first name was Hubert. Hubert Lindsay is his name. When he lived in Kentucky, they called him Red, Red Lindsay. Amen. Made his headquarters what time he was there for a while, just across the river down here in Covington area, but he never was home. Amen. He was always out there. When the feds needed somebody to quell the riot, they would airdrop with a helicopter, Red Lindsay, Holy Hubert, alias. In the midst of the riot, in his preaching, caused such a sensation among the students. Amen. He would stop the riot, and they would gather around to hear Holy Hubert preach. Praise God. Woo! He fired the flame and Jeb Smock, uh, praise God, and Max Lynch and Jim Gillis, praise God. Uh, amen. And they too have invaded the campus with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Where tonight in 1996 is our destiny as young preachers, as a new generation. Amen. Or as a... <coughs> 45-year-old veteran like myself, praise God. Is there anything left for us? Are there any lands left for us to conquer? Amen. The Bible said where? Amen. They went everywhere. Ha. Look north. Look south. Look east. Look west. Praise God. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's where you are right now. Praise God. It's everywhere we go. Praise God. Everywhere providence lands us. There is where God wants us to shout and shine. And lift up the name of Jesus. Don't wait for that golden bright dawning of some great glorious day for you. Brighten the dark corner where you are. Praise God. Glory to God. Those miners of Wales, uh, as the people of God prayed for revival, and they found God, uh, they sang in the darkness of the coal mine. They sang on the way to the coal mine. They sang back home from the coal mine. Uh, praise God. They sang after they got home. Uh, their cities rang out. Their churches rang out. Until the great revival choirs of Wales were called before the Queen to sing. The man that wrote the book, How Green Was My Valley, amen, he didn't play up the revival too much. But the thing that made Wales green, the thing that made Scotland bloom, was revival. Praise God. Amen. They found their destiny even in the coal mine. And sing their way to the heart of England. Praise God. Amen. It's everywhere. Sow thy seed. Everywhere. Praise God. Who knows what the harvest might be. Glory to God. The Bible says, Jesus said, go ye and lo I. They went everywhere. Amen. God working with them. Because he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. That word, Lo, Amen, is short for behold. Amen. It's a short for really look. Even though look doesn't do justice to the old English word, Lo. Amen. It uh, is something like that. It means to look or to behold or to see. Lo, I'm with you always. Behold, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world. Praise God. He said, go ye. Amen. And then, lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of the world. When persecution drove them out of Jerusalem and Philip the deacon couldn't deke anymore in Jerusalem, praise God, he went down to Samaria and started a revival and became an instant evangelist. All of Samaria, praise God, got 
gloriously, marvelously saved. Even old Simon the sorcerer got converted at least halfway. Amen. He had a long way to go and maybe he never did come out of his old ways. Some people didn't think he ever did, but at least they made an impression on Simon the sorcerer. Praise God. When Saul of Tarsus got gloriously converted, amen, in, in, in Damascus, and after spending three years in the wilderness of Arabia and having a long talk with Jesus, he didn't just have a little talk with Jesus. He had a long talk with Jesus. I mean, Jesus came to him about every day for about two or three years, praise God, and gave him the revelations of 14 books of the New Testament. Amen. And the revelation about the body of Christ. The church. Praise God. Amazing things Paul unveils after talking with Jesus all that time. He winds up right back in Damascus preaching the gospel to them right where he got saved, right where he got baptized. Amen. They surround Damascus with a garrison and they have to let Paul down out of the window in a basket to escape for his life. He went to Jerusalem and they wouldn't have anything to do with him in Jerusalem because they were scared of him. All the few apostles trusted him. Amen. But he couldn't preach to the people because they remembered him. And they were still afraid of him. They hadn't forgot. They thought it was a trick. Amen. That he was a plant by the Jews. Amen. So he went to Tarsus, his hometown. And there he went into, uh, you might say, uh, retreat for about eight years. Amen. Don't worry. Praise God. If you've got to call on your life, God will find you after a while. Even if you're back at Tarsus, praise God. Hallelujah. Barnabas, when he didn't win the, the, the election and get the position that Judas held, he didn't sit around Jerusalem, sing the blues, and come to church with the tuck head and all down in the mouth. He sold out, brought the price thereof, laid at the apostles' feet, amen, and went everywhere preaching the gospel. He wind up over in Antioch and had such a revival over in Antioch, he couldn't handle it by himself. He was catching so many fish, amen, his neck wouldn't hold it. And he remembered Saul. And he sent to Tarsus and got Saul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Barnabas was that kind of a man. Amen. He fished him out. Praise God. He flushed him out of the mess. <laughs> Hallelujah. He took him over to Antioch. And glory to God, they started a partnership that would just about turn all Asia upside down. In fact, they said of them, these men have turned the world upside down. Whoa! Everywhere they went. He was turning things upside down. That's upside down at least to the way they had been for ages. But everything's been upside down for ages and then you finally turn it right side up. They, some folks won't like it because they got used to it upside down. Amen. He was really turning it right side up. They misunderstood their motives. They said they've turned the world upside down. To an upside down man... Everything looks upside down. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. They turned it right side up. Glory to God. Paul invaded the, all of Asia. It took them two whole years to evangelize all Asia. Without a telephone, a telegraph, a newspaper. Amen. A, a, a radio or a television. Amen. Or, well... Praise God. They probably used tell a woman quite a bit. Amen. Because they, they evangelized all Asia in two years time. I mean in two years time they climbed the mountains of Turkey. They invaded every city in Turkey with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Set a flame by a holy fire. Amen. They evangelized all of Asia, our modern Turkey, in two years' time. 
Praise God. You talk about being on fire. Praise God. They accomplished the task for the glory of God. Because God was with them. Confirming the word with signs following. He said, if you go, lo, I. If you go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He said, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. He didn't say he'd be with us if we didn't go. There's only two classes of people in the church. That's those that's going and preaching and those that's sending. And when they send, they're going too. Amen. Those are the only ones that he's promised to be with. Those that have a vision to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If we're not going, we're not going to get to claim the promise of, Lo, I'm with you always either. Amen. I said, Amen. We're either going or sending. Since the commission is to go into all the world, the only way many of us can go is sin. The only way we're guaranteed the blessing of God upon our life and upon our testimony and upon our ministry is to sin. Amen. We're either going or sending. Praise God. That's the main business. The only business. The real business of the church of the living God. Amen. One of the first homecomings we had after I came to the highway of holiness, a dear misinformed sister was walking back and forth in front of this front seat during the morning service, saying, low, 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 low. She left this church a few days and went to a worldly church down in Cincinnati and started going down there. And she called me up to talk to me and ask me what I thought that that message that she gave that morning meant. Amen. I said, well, the Bible low means to look or to behold. Oh, no. She said, I don't think it means that at all. She said, I believe it's because somebody in that church was going low. I said, well, it's probably you. Because... Uh, you went to that worldly charismatic church right from here. Amen. And you're probably prophesying to yourself. Anybody who's going low is probably you. She ever did call me back. Amen. Anymore for some reason or other. Praise God. Amen. But if we don't go, we can't claim the promise of low. I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world. They went everywhere. Glory to God. David Livingston found his place in Africa as the pathfinder. When the missionaries, praise God, finally made up their mind that Africa was a wide open field and the church realized that contrary to the old belief, what is to be, will be. And only the elect are going to be saved. And many of them, when they talked about missions, in their conventions, they said, let the poor heathen alone. Amen. God hath ordained those to be saved that will be saved. And God hath ordained those to be lost who will be lost. Amen. Let the poor sinner alone. Amen. Glory to God. But they, there's a few of them came out of that. Glory to God. And they begin to blaze trails into foreign lands. Praise God. When Satan went to the Hebrides, uh, amen, uh, and landed on Anna, praise God, and preached in that island, uh, he was only able to win one soul that he knew. He lost his wife, he lost his child uh, on that island and left feeling like a failure. Gave his gold watch to the only convert he had. Amen. And the old gentleman made a speech, said, you're leaving us, but the loved ones that you've buried here, will meet us 
in the first resurrection. Peyton would go back just 20 miles away to another island called Tana. Amen. I believe that's the name of it. And there he would preach. Someone said when he left that island, there was not one sinner left. It was there that Peyton, because the Indians suffered for water, amen, most of the year, They run out of water because it quit raining. And during the rainy season they had plenty. And the dry season they had none. And he decided that prayerfully he would seek out a place and dig a well. And when he started to dig, the natives asked John Payton what he was doing. And he said, I'm digging for water. And this time they called him Missy Payton, short for missionary. Missy Payton... Water don't come from down there. Water come from up there. Rain don't come from the ground. Rain come from up there. Amen. He kept digging. He was able to get some of the missionaries or some of the natives to help him dig by paying them to help him dig. And finally at last, he stuck a crystal clear vein of cold, clear water. As the natives looked on, They wondered if he would share his water now. Amen. Or if he would just keep it to himself. As the world looks on tonight, they wonder if we'll share this happiness we've found. They wonder perhaps if we'll share these riches that we have discovered in Christ Jesus. Amen. They may not understand all about it. But they wonder if we'll keep it quiet. Amen. When Missy Payton came out on top, amen, they asked him if he was going to let them have any of his water. He said, why, sure, it's for everybody on the island. Praise God, everybody rejoiced, and the impression that he made upon the island was great. Amen. They even tried digging other wells, but every one they dug on the little island, they found nothing but salt water. God, by a miracle, had directed John Payton to dig in the only place on the island where they could find fresh water. Praise God. Not a soul was lost when the English ship picked him up off that island. They went everywhere. I want to tell you, in your workplace, at school, everywhere you go, there's an emission field for God. Praise God. The church around the world told of a Presbyterian church out west, amen, that it doubled and redoubled its size because everybody in the church won one. Amen. And the pastor, praise God, encouraged everybody then to win another and the church began to grow what would happen if everybody in the highway of holiness won one in 96 and they in turn won another do you think we could do it do you think if we'll go if we'll try if we'll speak up for Jesus if we'll invite if we'll help somebody to find God That God may even work with us, confirming the word with signs following. Hallelujah. Notice in Mark 16, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Now he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and he, and, and, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. When he said, go preach the gospel, that was first person. When he said, he that believeth, that was second person. Amen. Then he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Them is also, in the English language, second person. He didn't say that the signs would only follow the preachers. He said, these signs will follow them that belief. Amen. As simple a faith as that little boy as they gathered around to pray for the sick mother. Bedfast. Couldn't cook. 
take care of the family. A tiny little boy climbed up and laid his hand on his mother's head and said, Oh, God, heal my mama. So she said, took us some supper. And God healed her in answer to that little boy's prayer. Praise God. Simple faith <laughs> is all it takes to lay hold on God. Praise God. The faith of the child rings the heart of God and rings heaven's bell for us. Amen. Tonight, the promises to those that go and do what he said to do. Amen. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. My name, they shall cast out devils. Hallelujah. I've seen it happen. Amen. Saints of God bind themselves together and cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. How many seen that happen, huh? Just tonight, you've seen that sign reenacted. Oh, I know that they say the new tongue God's talking about is that one we speak with after he got saved. Uh-uh. Amen. He's talking about supernatural languages that we don't know. Languages that we can't speak. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The other night, a fellow came to church, and I began to talk to him. His name was the same as mine. Amen. And and uh, I was glad to see him and uh, hoped he would stay. And he popped me a question. He said, do you believe in the five signs of the Mark 16? And I, <clears throat> I caught that real quick. I said, well, we don't believe in serpent handling. Amen. He got mad and didn't even stay for church because we didn't believe in serpent handling. But while we was discussing it, he said, you got people in your church that believes in carrying the box. Amen. Do you know one scripture in the Bible that commands us to carry the box? Amen. There ain't none. I said, I think you're wrong about that, sir. Amen. There ain't nobody in our church that believes in carrying the box. Amen. Because Jesus, when he said they shall take up serpents, did not mean that they would impose it on themselves. It would be an act of Satan, a work of the devil, a work of persecution and opposition. Amen. And in that case, we'd be able to tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means would be able to hurt us. Amen. Amen. There are a lot of people very foolish, though honest-hearted, amen, and ignorant that believe that we are to impose this upon ourselves. Hogwash. Amen. Now, I'm not afraid of snakes. I respect them. Amen. If they're poisonous, I give them a good birth. Amen. I haven't killed any yet in many years up on the hill because, uh, amen, a, a good big black snake is worth a thousand dollars to a farmer because it eats the rats and mice. Amen. And I'm a gardener. And so I've seen a bunch of them up there. Amen. I got one up there that's been there for a good long while. Amen. In fact, he's got some sons and daughters that they're about as big as he is now. But I give most snakes wide berth. Amen. I respect them. I keep my distance. Amen. My mama didn't make no fool. Amen. No, sir. My dad didn't raise no dummy. Glory to God. I've got better horse sense. Good old common sense. Somebody said the trouble with horse sense today, all the ones that got it is the horses. I've got better horse sense than to carry a box of snakes to church and get them out and handle them during church. Now, folks, that's what I call being broke out with the dumbs. Amen. 
real bad. Hallelujah. Praise God. God may bless you in spite of your ignorance, but He's not blessing you because of your ignorance. Praise God. What's He saying in the Bible when He said, They shall tread on serpents and scorpions. Amen. They shall take up serpents and nothing shall by any means hurt you. What's He saying? If you go for God, the devil can't kill you till God gets through with you. If you'll serve God, the devil can't stop you. There's not enough devils in hell. He Amen. To call a halt to your testimony. Amen. Lock me up in a prison and throw away the key. Amen. Paul was there. He said, The gospel's not bound. I may be in chains, but the gospel's not bound. He wrote 14 books of the New Testament. Praise God. I think he wrote Hebrews myself too, Richard. Praise God because he talks about his bonds. Amen. Talks about his son, Timothy. Praise God. And all of the earmarks of the beloved Apostle Paul in the book of Hebrews. I chalk it up to the Apostle Paul. Many of those things that he wrote, he wrote them from behind bars. Why was he behind bars? Because he went. Amen. Glory to God. And you know, old Mark, when he got cold feet the first trip and went home, amen, he didn't sit there. Barnabas flushed him out of his nest again. Amen. And took him with him again. And when Paul saw that Barnabas had Mark, they got into a argument about it and the contention was so great amen that Barnabas and Paul split up Barnabas took Mark and went one direction and Paul took Silas and went another direction and God had two evangelistic teams all things work together for good to them that love the Lord Mark and Barnabas did their work for God, praise God. And this beloved apostle Mark, praise God, raised up at the feet of St. Peter and probably his very uh, gospel was dictated by St. Peter himself. And because Mark, praise God, went, even after he had failed the first time, we have the gospel according to St. Mark. Hallelujah. And I read to you from that gospel tonight. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas went down to Philippi, cast the devil out of a woman who used divination and brought great gain to her, her, her managers, if you will. Amen. And she went around town all week long and said, These men are men of the Most High God. Paul got tired of the devil's advertisement and cast the devil out of her. Amen. God don't need the devil's advertisement. Sometimes if you're not careful, the devil will tie in with you for his own gain. Some men will tie in with you for their own gain. Amen. Sometimes you've got to be careful who you tie up with. Aha. But God can turn even situations like that to His glory and benefit. Praise God. They cast the demon out of the woman and when it looked like they would have had great success thereafter, amen, they throw them in the Philippian jail. Put them in stocks. Amen. But they were going everywhere. The Lord came to them that night. And lo, He was there in the jailhouse. And Paul and Silas started singing praises to him at midnight. And the more they sang praises to God, the closer he got, the nearer he drew, until finally his footsteps began to shake the jailhouse down. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible said there was a great earthquake. Amen. And as the jailhouse began to shake, the stocks fell off. The jailer was about to give it up, commit suicide, because if the men escaped, he was responsible. It was a death penalty. Let the prisoners escape. As he started to take his own life, 
Paul said, do thyself no harm. We are all here. Praise God. He looked around, counted the prisoners. He said, well, you are, aren't you? Something out of the ordinary has happened. I'll tell you what I need. I need what you got. Uh, praise God. Uh, amen. And the Philippian jailer got saved. And his whole family got saved. And got baptized that night. Amen. He became the charter member of the Philippian church. Praise God. He washed their scars where they were beaten. And cleansed their wounds and refreshed them. Took them home with him. Praise God. And the old song says that hallelujah bunch. Went and had a midnight lunch. I'm so glad I'm on the inside looking out. Amen. Don't think too badly of us. Amen. It sometimes go home and have a midnight snack after church. Paul and the Philippian jailer started that down in old Philippi with that first revival in the jailhouse. Hallelujah. Amen. God was with them, confirming His Word with signs following. Glory to God. Amen. There may be a great shaking in the air. There's a stirring on in the minds of men. People are getting shaky about the times. They know something climactic is about to happen. Amen. They think that the, that the millennium is getting ready to start. They talk about 96 and 97 and 98. 97, Hong Kong goes back to the Chinese. 98, Israel celebrates its jubilee. 50 years of nation. Amen. Glory to God. These are climactic times. These are moments of opportunity. It may look like every area has already been evangelized. Every place has already been burned over. But down in South America, they're still trying to catch up with a tribe of about 50 people, amen, that have never heard yet. The country called off, amen, the search. Wouldn't let them look any longer, amen. But never you mind. There's about 10 or 15 tribes that have never been found yet. They, they run from publicity. They flee from those that would find them. They have only had short sightings here and there. They know they exist. Amen. And they're small clans. Praise God. But never you mind. One of these days, praise God, the gospel is going to break through and Jesus is going to find them. Amen. In this computer age, what will it be for you and I? What frontier will you and I go breaking through like a mighty explosion? Amen. And carve our neck in history. Glory to God. I say, go. Go. And if you feel it all like it, go. Let Gabriel interpret for you. Amen. And we'll help you go. It's God's will for you to go to Kenya. Amen. There are 101 places to go yet today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go! And the Lord said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. I know you've had physical problems, Karen. After your four years in Africa and suffering malaria several times. But there will come a time that you'll find that place in the will of God. Amen. You'll be like the Coriel sisters, mother and daughter team. Amen. That felt led to go to Japan and preach to the deaf mutes. The mother was laying sick in bed. She said, if you're going, daughter, I'm going too. And she got up and got better. Both of them. Amen. MacArthur had called for a thousand missionaries to Japan and only got a penance. A very few. It was wide open. But now God is sending two women. I'll tell you something. If he can't find a man, he'll send a woman. And if he can't send a woman, he'll send a child. 
That mother and daughter team boarded a ship for Japan. Amen. And when they walked down the gangplank, that daughter had a great big garter hanging on her neck. Uh, and her mother was still suffering from the ravages of her disease. Uh, amen. Uh, but when they stepped on the shores of Japan, both of them were instantly healed. What happened? God kept His Word. He said, Lo, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world. They went in among the deaf mutes speaking the international language. They won so many deaf mutes to the Lord Jesus Christ that they were the envy of every missionary that tried to invade with the gospel the shores of Japan. Amen. I talked to Bobby Brooks about them and asked him about the Corral sisters. And he laughed and he said, I talked to another missionary too about them. And he said, I'll tell you, Brother Collins, he said, they've just got the advantage over the rest of us. What was it? By the direction of God, they found a place where they could evangelize that nobody else had ever gone or thought about. The deaf mutes of Japan. So successful, so many deaf mutes converted to Christ that now, amen, they're sending missionaries into other countries to evangelize other deaf mutes. Amen. One well, of the greatest missionary efforts in the world going on today is going on by the deaf mutes in Japan, evangelized by mother and daughter team, sent of God, healed of God, and directed by God to evangelize those shores. You'll find yours too. If you'll pray and probe and seek God, you'll find your destiny in 1996. And you'll never be happy until you do. You'll never be happy anywhere else. Amen. There'll be opposition, there'll be persecution, and even family misunderstanding. But you'll know that I've got to go. I have a destiny. A date to keep with my own destiny. Maybe in 1996. Stand with me tonight. Praise God. Father God, challenge our hearts. And wherever we find ourselves on the job, at the workplace, in school, oh Lord God, among our neighbors, among our friends and acquaintances, or wherever we land, with the knowledge and understanding of the things that we know. Praise God. That God holds us responsible to shine a light. That God holds us responsible to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. God holds us responsible to sow the seeds of our personal faith and be a light and be a witness and win others. My God, what a church we'd have if everybody went out a flaming emissary and one just one they in turn one another Father help us to find our destiny don't let us miss God's best for our life in Jesus name Amen Amen while we sing Amen let's begin to come out and let's make our way to an old-fashioned altar. That's where good things start. Let me That's where great commitments begin. As he On our knees, like other great men, then we have envisioned and shall, shall envision as they envision something that God has for us to do, however small, however and simple, however insignificant. And not die. God, Wants to use you. God must use you. You'll never be happy out of the will of God.